Hello, hello, hello! Magandang umaga muli sa ating lahat. Blessed Thursday morning sa ating lahat. Okay, let us invite the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we continually praise and glorify you. You reign forever and ever. Forgive us of our iniquities and shortcomings that we have thought and done. Thank you for your guidance, protection, and provision every day. Lord, we commit to you this today's devotion. Holy Spirit works powerfully in each mind and heart who are watching and listening to you, to your word. May your kingdom come. May your will be done as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Meron akong gustong i-share yung folk tale from Peru. Once upon a time, there was a greedy baker who became so angered over a neighbor's happiness from smelling the fresh aromas of his bakery that he demands that his neighbor pay him a smelling fee so for enjoying the delightful smell of baking bread. So the poor neighbor is confused and does not have very much money. So the baker takes him to court. The judge said, it is my duty to listen to what the baker has to say. So I order both of the baker and his neighbor to come tomorrow. So the judge sent word to the neighbor that he should bring five gold coins with him. The kind man worried that he would have to hand over the little money he had to the greedy baker. But the baker was delighted with the news. So at the court, after hearing the baker's complaint, he turned to the neighbor and asked, Is it true that you have enjoyed the smell of, his, of this man's baked goods every day for many years? Yes, your honor, sagot ng, uh, ng man, the neighbor of the baker. So the judge thought for a while, and he declared, A smell has stolen. Since stealing is a, is a crime, the neighbor must be punished. And then he said, Take the five gold pieces in your pocket. Now, drop the coins from one hand to another. Ang ginanito niya for many times. The judge turned to the baker said do you hear the jingle of the gold coins yes said the baker with a greedy grin did you like the sound yes it's a wonderful sound said the baker so the judge said you have already a fair payment your neighbor was guilty of stealing the smell of your baked goods you have been paid by hearing the sound of his money this case is dismissed said the judge the courtroom is filled with amazement and laughter. Nakakatuwa yung kwento na yun. And kung titignan natin, uh, may katotohanan din na sometimes tayong na sinasabi natin sa isang tao na we got what you have deserved. So gusto ba natin yung we got what we deserve? Or we got it even if we don't deserve it? So let us read Titus 3.5 He's, uh, Sabi dito, He saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Itong libro ng Titus, this is a letter of Apostle Paul to Titus in Titus in Crete. So Titus is an early Christian missionary church leader and a companion of Apostle Paul. But aside from that, he is also a disciple of Apostle Paul. So this shows, ito, pinapakita nito yun ang salvation ng isang tao na basis, the basis of, nung basis ng ating salvation rests on God's mercy in sending His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. So, God did not save us because we are righteous. Because sa mga bagay na ginawa nating mabuti, hindi po yun ang basihan ni Lord na sinayip tayo, kundi ang kanyang kahabagan. 
yung grace and mercy niya sa atin. So righteousness is an wala ang righteousness is wala yan kay God if we do righteous things. If we, if that is the basis of ours of of our salvation. So God save us not by our works of righteousness. He does not give people eternal life based on what we do. Based on what we read, nasabi niya dito that He saved us not because of righteous things we had done. Ito ay uh, sinulat ni Apostle Paul kay Titus. So, as a, a believer, okay, a believer requires both salvation of his soul and a renewing to maturity as, as a believer. So, there is no justification for God saving our souls other than His mercy toward the guilty. So, acceptance of mercy requires humility on our part. So becoming a Christian this way strikes at the very heart of human pride. So, salvation requires spiritual birth by God's grace and mercy. So, we cannot become Christians by our works, but works are the result of salvation. We cannot confuse root and fruit. Hindi daw tayo makonfuse yung root and fruit. Ano ba yung root and fruit? Not, mas nauna yung root kaysa yung fruit in a tree. So, the root must come before the fruit. Likewise, as sa salvation natin, salvation comes before good works. So, we do good works because we are saved by our Lord Jesus Christ. So, I want to share to you a testimony of my own how I become a Christian. So, 1995, nung tinanggap ko ang Diyos, si Jesus Christ sa akin. So, when I was became born again, that was 1995. And got, and got baptized in 1996. So, I remember the feeling before that I need Jesus Christ to have eternal life. Kahit bata pa ako nun, that was, I think, grade 6. That kailangan ko ang naantindihan ko na kailangan ko ang Panginoong Heso Kristo sa buhay ko para magkaroon ng eternal life. So, naramdaman ko yung feeling na maging you have to humble yourself before the Lord and accept the gift, the eternal life that, that our God is offering to us. So, life ay so, life with our Lord forever keeps me going in faith. Yun yung nagtulak sa akin, yung to keep, uh, to, uh, to keep um, going in faith, yung to be with the Lord forever. So, if you want to be with the Lord forever, firstly, is to become born-again Christian. And, after that, you have to um, follow His will. Hindi lang basta tayo naging born-again Christian and tama na, tama na. No, marami pong mga um, commands ni Lord sa mga Christians to do. To keep on faith, to work on their faith, to work out their salvation, not to work for your salvation, to work out. So, kailangan tayong mag-grow in faith. So, yan po. So, even in this dark world. So, now that I'm going, I'm growing in faith, I realize that I need also to share God's words to win souls. So, at a young age, I started, uh, we started already evangelizing. During high school days, so, masama na ako sa mga young people, mga leaders to evangelize and to share the work of the Lord. So, yun po ang um, hanggang, hanggang ngayon po, dapat po na every time na maging on fire tayo sa ating faith. So, ito po yung sinasabi ng Titus 3.5 na sulat niya po sa tulad kay Titus na magi, tayo ay na safe hindi yung righteous works natin, kundi na save tayo because of God's mercy and grace that He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our for the forgiveness of our sins. So, brothers and sisters, the salvation that we receive through God's mercy and grace, let's a share also to others that they may also experience the love of our God and also to be with the Lord forever, like us. So let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you, Lord, for your saving grace. Thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our, for our sins, so that we, may that we may be saved and be with you forever. Thank you, Lord, for that grace and mercy that every day that we are also experiencing your salvation. Every day, O oh God. Thank you, O oh Lord, for your protection upon us. And may your word today, O oh Lord, will sprout in our hearts and bear fruits. That the salvation that we have received from you, we may also share to others that they will also experience your love and your salvation and to be with you forever. Even in this dark world, O oh God, that we will be strengthened, that we will be lifted up, that you will um, that you will be lifted up, O oh God, in our lives. That we Christians, that we shine, and people will see the Christ in us. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory and honor and adoration. In Jesus' name, Amen.